Hello, my sisters, and welcome to it. This is another great session on your mathematical literacy. My name is Abraham, and I'm not alone. I'm having Haley with me. Hell yeah, Abraham. I'm doing well. Good. And yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. Looking Headache. forward to today's show. I am. I'm so pumped up and ready to learn a lot. Good. I hope the mindsetters are also ready to learn. Me too. hope they're out there and rearing to go. Yeah. What, what are we learning about today? We're going to be doing some ratio and rate, and these are like crucial little skills that they need. Everybody needs. Grade tens to matrix, mm. so they need to pay Perhaps attention. Perhaps you can just clarify, why are we starting with ratio? Well, ratio, I feel that you need to learn ratio before you can go on and do rate. Okay. So I like to teach it that way. <laughs> All right. It makes sense and too much logic. Thank you very much. Go take your position. Thank you. Right, mindset is <coughs> it is the time again for you to just chat with us and let us just learn a lot together. Remember, first of all, this show is proudly sponsored by Macmillan, so you can get your notes on our website. It is simple. It's lenextra.co.za forward slash live. And you can also chat to me over Facebook. Our Facebook link is simple also, facebook.com forward slash lenextra. On Twitter, follow us. We are at learn extra tim fuller back and for now it is time for us to learn a lot take your pen and paper next to you no calculators needed today i hear but let's learn a lot Haley. We take your always time. need calculators. <laughs> but I asked you before that, are we going to need a calculator? No, I said, we, you know, we will need a calculator. Sorry, then I'm a scientist. All right. That. So my start off with a confusion. Make sure that you also <laughs> have your calculator next to you. Let's learn. Okay, so let's see. Today's show, we're going to be doing ratios and rates. So let's see what's in the show. We're going to be discussing ratio and what is all about ratio. Then we're going to go on to rate. So like I say, we need to do ratio first. And then finally, we're going to do some calculations with both ratio and and rate. Like I said to you in the introduction, this is really, really a crucial step. There are so many questions. Every paper that I look at, look at has rate and ratio questions. Sometimes you don't even realize that it's a rate and a ratio question, but you can deal with it the exact same way I'm going to teach you today. So it's a crucial skill that you have to learn. Okay, let's start off with ratio. So ratio is a comparison of two numbers called terms of the ratio. Ratio has no units since the quantities being compared are the same kind or type. So remember, there are no units and we're comparing two values. <coughs> a ratio can be written in different ways. So in words, I can say, well, I can compare A to B with a colon, a colon B, and as a fraction, A over B. Let's look at an example for a second. So if I have, okay, Abram, what's your favorite sweet? My favorite? Sweet. Sweet. Uh, mm, I've got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot. Just Can you just give me one? Let's mine? just take halls. Take hall. yes. halls. Take halls. Yes. Halls. Okay. So we're looking at the number of halls that Abram can eat compared to, well, I like Smarties. Okay. That too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just look at a, couple at a comparison. So let's say that he can eat 18 halls to every time that I have Smarties and I can have 35 Smarties. So now how can I write this? I've written it with a colon. I can also compare it in words. So I can say, well, in words, I've got 18 to 35. And then most importantly, I can write it as a fraction. And what's great about being able to write a ratio as a fraction is that I can then manipulate it like I do a normal fraction. So it has all the characteristics of a normal fraction. And we're going to use that fact later on in the lesson. Ratios can be written in equivalent forms and therefore used for comparison. So let's do some examples of that. And like I say to um, my kids that I teach, there's basically three things that you can do with a ratio. So the first thing is if we're given a ratio. So if I've been given a ratio, and I'm going to deal with one of our favorite concentrate juice. And I'm not going to mention the name because I might get into trouble. But if we've got a juice concentrate and the bottle tells me that I need to put it in the ratio of one to three. Now, what does that mean? It means one part of the concentrate, and I'm just going to simplify this count, to three parts water. 
And remember, at the beginning of the show, I said that ratios don't have units. This is what, and uh, the reason I say part is it can be one cup of concentrate to three cups of water, one mill of concentrate to three mils of water, or one bucket of concentrate to three buckets, one liter, three liters. And you get the idea. I can change it to any unit that I want, as long as my ratio stays the same. And what is nice about being able to write this is now I can kind of questions I will be given is so if I'm given if I have say le let's say two cups of concentrate how much water do I need how much water would I need now, I write my ratios in a very specific way. What I do is I say, well, what have I been given? So let's use a different color. I know I need one to three. This is my concentrate. That's my water. Now I need, I've got two cups of concentrate. And I want to know how much water that will give me. And the way I deal with it is that I say, well, okay, what do I do? from my one to make it two. I times here by two. So I do the same thing on the other side, times by two. So I see that my calculation is actually three times two, and that means I need six, and they were cups of water. <coughs> so fairly simple if you set it out the correct way. So we've got what we've been given at the top, what we're being asked for at the bottom, We've got one unit and a second unit. And if you stick to that, it's fairly easy to do. When we get to a little bit harder numbers, I'll explain. Well, let me do one that's a little bit harder. So let us take an example of, let's do the same thing. I've got one, two, three. But now let's say I have five cups, or let's say five liters of water. And I want to know how much concentrate I need to add. So what I do in this case, again, I say, well, what do I do to three to get five? Now, in this case, I multiply by the second number over the first. So I multiply by five over three, and I need to do the same thing that side. Multiply by five over three. So my sum actually ends up being one times by five over three. And the one is not important, so I can take my five over three, so I should get my calculator out, 5 divided by 3, and I get an answer of 1.67. So we'll round off. So that is 1.67 liters of concentrate. And the last way they can actually ask you this, this question with ratios is 2. Okay, so this is actually our second, the next way. We can divide a number in a given ratio. So again, let me take my concentrate, my juice, so I know I've got one, two, three. Let's say I want to make, I want to make, let's say two liters of juice, of mixed juice. How do I then calculate it? Well, what we do in this case is I'm going to draw a little cup here to show you. If I have a little cup, in my cup, or in my bucket, or whatever it is, I've got one part that is concentrate. Then on top of that, I'm going to add three parts of water. So those then, the yellow ones, are my water. So if I look at this, let me take another different color. If I look at that, in total, I have four parts. So what I've basically done is I've taken that and I've added them. So I've got four parts in total. So I take my two liters, and I'm going to divide it by how many parts we have. And from that, I'm going to see that it's 0 0,5 liters per part. Now, in fact, that now I know how much in each part. But how many parts of concentrate? I needed one of concentrate, so of liters of concentrate. And I needed three parts 
of water. So here we're going to end up with 0, 0,5 litres. And here we're going to end up with 1,5 litres. Now, a nice thing about this is you can actually check it. If you have a scientific calculator, what we're going to do is we're going to say 0, 0,5 divided by 1,5 and then can you see we get a fraction of 1 over 3. Well, what is that? That's the ratio, 1 to 3. That's what I started with. So I know my answer now is correct. So I hope that helps with ratio. But what we're going to do is we're going to carry on working with it through the show. So I'm going to try to go slowly so that we can all kind of keep track. Right, then we're going to move on to rate. So rate is a special kind of ratio. This is in which there are two or possibly more quantities being compared that have different units. So remember your ratio had the same units, or had no units in fact. This has different units. An example of rates include comparing the distance travelled by a car and the time it takes to travel that distance. In fact, that's the speed. So what are we looking at? Kilometres per hour. And what is important with rate is we're looking for this word, per, because as soon as, I don't know what happened here, as soon as you see the word per, you know that it is a rate, and a rate you can deal with the same way you deal with ratio. So look out for that word. We can compare the time spent on a telephone call and the total cost of the call, basically in rands per minute. Okay? So two different things, rands per minute. Or we could compare the value of the rand currency. This is one that they really like to ask you in exams. The rand currency to the US dollar or any other currency for that fact. And this gives you an exchange rate. So the rand to the dollar will be written as rand to dollar. So um, we, can, we can look at a whole lot of rates. In fact, I asked Abram just before the show to try to find a rate or a speed that people type text messages. So I know he's got an interesting fact to share with you. So mm. send it back to me because I need to finish this before we go to break. Okay. But let's give us that interesting fact. All right. There's a guy in uh, one of the Chinese. He broke a world record uh, by typing the fastest SMS at a rate of only 41,52 seconds. 41,52. So that's quite fast. Mm. Do Very we know what he had to type? Yes. He had to type uh, this text. The rate of twist Pira of the Gerena, Serosno Mas, and all of, the biological all of that, there. those <laughs> biological terms, big terms, but it's quite like three sentences. Maybe we can actually put it onto the Facebook I'll site do that. And, then yeah. and then people can like challenge. See how long Let's it takes you to type it. Let's make the challenge. Let's do a challenge. I'm up for it. See how long it takes you to type it. There, I, I saw this actually, the, this text, and there are big biological terms, and this was done perfectly in what did you say, 41 point. 52 seconds. 52 seconds. And very interestingly, uh, 300 participants tried it out, but only one person did it. That's brilliant, mm. brilliant. I don't think I would be able to do it, so definitely not that fast. I'll give it a try. <laughs> okay. So these are things that we can compare, and it's nice to be able to compare values. So two important concepts to understand when working with rate are constant rate and unit rate. So let's see what those are. Constant rate is what I was dealing with actually earlier, although it was a ratio, it was a constant ratio, it's the same thing. If I'm dealing with, for example, let's do this as an example, my cost of my telephone call. So cost of telephone, cost of, let's, of call. This will be in rands per minute. Now, the longer I'm on my phone, clearly the more I'm going to pay, but it is a constant rate because the company will charge me, let's say they charge me 99 cents per minute. So we know the rate and the more I speak, the longer it'll be, but this is a constant and we can compare values. The next one that's important to remember is the unit rate and this is the rate per one. So for example, of this would be the speed that I travel will be 120 kilometers per hour. So I want to know how fast am I going in one unit, in one hour. And where this is used very, let's not move up too much, where this unit rate is used very much is when we compare things like compare cost. So compare things like, like cost of something. So if I look at, say, a two kilogram 
um, two kilogram, well, let's do two liter milk. Okay, let's, yep, oh, lost my eraser. Okay, so if I say that I've got two liters of milk and that costs me $17.99 and one liter of milk costs me 10 rand 95 which is the better buy? And in these cases, what you need to do, and I'm sure that you guys can do this, so I'm not going to do it right now, is we need to compare the same value. Compare per litre, per one litre. So we would compare them to one litre so that we can compare which is actually the better bar. And this kind of question comes out quite often in the papers that I've seen. So I hope that helps to explain rate and ratio. And maybe before we start a question, maybe we can give them a little bit of a break. See Let's if they can that. text. Let's do that. I'll <laughs> put the challenge right on the Facebook page. So get on the page, facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. And let's see if you can text that text within 41,52 seconds. <laughs> Let's just see. But otherwise, a great quote says that life is good for, for two things. One, discovering mathematics, and two, teaching mathematics, and we, uh, and we are enjoying ourselves. See you after the break. <laughs>